والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa taala, I praise Him for all of His blessings, and I ask Him by His names and attributes that He bless us all and forgives our sins and gathers us to Al Qiyam among those that He has accepted. May He, the Lord, Allah, teach us and allow us to understand Him more. And open our hearts to the memorization of his names and attributes. To allow us to call him by the names that he has named himself. And for him to answer us according to the attributes that he has accepted for himself. May we all, inshallah, be among those who are educated and learned. Among the Muslims, that they have accepted their faith with an understanding not with inheritance. In our last episode, brothers and sisters, and the brothers here that we have with us, as you have got custom to, Brother Noor on my left side, from Indonesia, yeah. and Brother Abdul Fattah from the United States, and Brother Ibrahim from Guinea Conakry in Africa, and Brother Akmal from Malaysia, and you that is sitting there in front of the screen, if you recall in our last episode, we started with the topic of? The uh, topic of Asma'u Sifat. Al Asma'i wa Sifat. The name and attributes of Allah. The names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We touched that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has names, and He has how many names? Uh, uh, that we know? 99. 99 names. names. Yeah. And that those names, by us learning them and memorizing them, and implying them in our lives, we're assuring ourselves the entrance of Jannah. Jannah. Jannah yeah. And with those names also, it changes the course of our life. It allows us to be better people, better Muslims. It allows us to take those characteristics of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names mm -hmm. into an exercise and a practice of who we are mm -hmm. in giving mercy as He is Ar Rahim, in being generous from the name of his al karim mm -hmm. in educating and learning, understanding it from the name of Al-Alim, mm -hmm. having wisdom when we deal with everyone and everything, from that name of his Al-Hakim, mm -hmm. knowing that we are victorious and protected because we understand that he is Al-Jabbar, Al-Qahar. With these names, implanted in our hearts in their effect in changing the way we live in our attitudes we become better people mm -hmm. and that's why those who practice Islam truly you feel safe next to them because they understand that there is a name that Allah has called As-Salam peace the one who brings peace yeah. Yeah. and he is peace mm -hmm. And from that we become more peaceful. And we spread peace. Our today's topic is really getting into how we as Muslims, inshallah, are to deal with these names and how our faith is to be based. Because throughout the course of history of Islam, quite a number of groups have existed and there were contradictions and debates through the centuries yeah. of how to approach the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are groups that denied them or denied some of them. And groups that confirmed and accepted a few. And others altered and changed the meanings of them. Hmm. Or given them to the creations that the Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. And made examples of them. So we as Muslims today need to go back to the source, the Qur'an and the understandings of the Rasul in his teachings to allow ourselves to be on the right path. And we go back to our scholars and they say, I want you to listen to this. We as Muslims acknowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has names that he has named himself. Names that are not to be changed or altered or made an example of. 
names that are absolute, as well as he has attributes that he has chosen for himself. And we see it evident every single day within his creations of those perfect attributes and the perfect of names. So we confirm there are names, and there are 99, and attributes that can be countless. And we confirm that these names are perfect as they come, and unique yeah. as he is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, within him, he's unique. There's no other creations like him. And there is no names like his names. So his names are as unique as him, as he, as Allah is. So when we say he is Al-Alim, then it differs from the knowledge that you and I have. Yeah. For you and I, our knowledge is limited. And his knowledge is unlimited. Mm -hmm. As you and I say that we can see and hear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and hears also, but in a different way. His sight is perfect. Mm -hmm. And his hearing is perfect. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that can escape his sight. And there is nothing that can escape his hearing. Mm -hmm. He hears the black ant on a black smooth rock in the midst of night. He hears the footsteps of that ant. يسمع دبيب النملة السوداء على صفاء ملساء في ظلمة الليل. Can you imagine that? A black ant on a smooth surface that is dark and black. In the midst of night, he hears the footsteps of that ant. Any leaf that falls, he knows. تسقط من ورقة إلا يعلمها ولا حبة even the seed that he did not document in the book mm -hmm. so your knowledge and mine your eyesight and mine even though we might share the verb we might share the adjective but we don't share the perfection mm -hmm. and for that we confirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has names and attributes that suits Him without an example or altering or denial or adding. Can we repeat that? We confirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has names and attributes that is suitable for Him, for His uniqueness, without an example or denial, or alteration, or subtraction or addition to it. Okay. So if he tells us in the Quran al-Kareem, Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa, and that he has settled above his throne, then we believe sincerely that he actually literally settled above his throne. He risen, and settled above his throne. How? We don't get into that. We don't know the how, but we know the fact. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that he settled and raised above his throne. Because he said so. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. But how did he settle and rise? We do not know. Because we yeah. haven't seen. Yeah. And asking this question of how, is considered a bid'ah, innovation. Mm -hmm. Imam Malik one time was sitting in his masjid and a man came and he said, Ya Imam, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. How did he, kayf istawa? How did he settle? Imam Malik's answer was, Al-Istawa'u ma'loom. The rising and the settlement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is known. We know that because he said it in the Quran al kareem But the how is unknown. And the question of it is bid'ah, is innovation. And he would not allow him to sit. You cannot judge about something you have not seen. Yeah. Yeah. 
or experience. And every species has its own characteristics. Yeah. You have a foot, don't you, Ibrahim? Yes, sir. Is it like an elephant's foot? <laughs> no. no. It's human. No. Foot. It's a different foot. Yeah. We get to see our way. Is it the same thing as the bat? No. That's for sure. The bat is different. Yeah. Actually, they say it doesn't have eyes. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a radar. It's a radar system yeah. that it has. But that's its way in method of sight. Right. It has its own nature. And as the creatures itself differ from one another, so does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. He is different from his creature and creations. So we confirm the names and we confirm the attributes. Mm. Without an example, without alteration, without the know-how, mm -hmm. without the deletion, or without the addition. After the break, I'll touch about a sensitive issue about some of the groups that have existed in our time. And I know probably this podium is not time for it, but I'll just touch a little of individuals that denied some of the names and attributes. So hopefully you'll bear patience. And it'll be an opening for you to learn more and to understand the Lord in a better way and to find yourself among His servants. And hopefully our brothers here will share with us their thoughts of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed their lives mm -hmm. from a name or so that they have learned in their life that really clicked to make a difference in their life. I'll see you in a few moments. Relax, stretch your legs, and we'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, for those who want to enter the Jannah, the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the believers. And that's why we need to learn and we need to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us so that we submit ourselves to the orders of Allah. This is knowledge that we need to learn. Why we're spending more time to look into the verses and to the meanings of the verses in depth so that we can get to learn from it what we need ourselves to be steadfast, to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ponder over the meanings of the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh again. I welcome you back and hopefully today you will have something that you would want to share with us within your own living room and in your own atmosphere. I said prior to the end of the first session before the break that during the time of history the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been approached differently by various groups. The reason with that is that many people thought that they can understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through, through their logic. Mm. Through their logic. Through their logic. Mm. And they brought that philosophy. Mm. And they thought that that language and philosophy and logic will allow them to understand the Lord. And they forgot that their own imagination cannot exceed their own visions that they have, have seen. Mm -hmm. Or visions that other people have experienced and translate it to them. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one on the face of earth have actually saw Him in reality. Yes, we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. I guarantee you that. Allah ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, 
إلى ربها ناظرة أي faces will be enlightened on that day because it is looking at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's looking at its Lord, at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has a face. It's not like any of our faces and we do not get into the details of what face does He have? Does He have eyes, ears, nose, yeah. mouth? No, we don't get into that. That is haram. That is forbidden. That is un- impossible because we have not seen Him yet. Yeah. But we know that he has a face. He said he has a face. That means he does. In the way it suits him. It's unique as he is unique. And Rasul Sallallahu says in the hadith, لَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ كَمَا تَرَوْنَ الْقَمَرَ لَيْلَةَ الْبَدْرِ لَا تُضَامُونَ فِي رُؤْيَتِهِ You will see your Lord as you will see a moon when it's full. You have no doubts of it. Yeah, clear. It's clear. And so will we see Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala on the, on the Day of Judgment without a doubt. But because of that philosophy in that misleading logic that some of the groups in the history of Islam have embraced, we find them denying at times the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. And they said if we give him names, then we have given him an identity that is surrounded. If we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have settled on his throne, then we have... We, we've had him in, in one area that is lacking him. And they don't understand mm-hmm. that we don't get into the house. Yeah. He settled the way it suits him. Mm-hmm. His knowledge is everywhere. مَا يَكُونُ مِن نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَأْفِعُهُمْ وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ وَلَا أَدْنَى مِن ذَلِكَ ولا أكثر إلا هو, إلا هو معهم إلا هو معهم أينما كان معهم with what? It's with them. his knowledge mm-hmm. with the علم mm-hmm. and there is no two that he is not their third there is no four that he is not their fifth there is no more than that or less that he is not with them wherever they are a with his knowledge so wherever you are brother and sister Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you're doing sees what you're doing hears what you're doing mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean he's there with you literally because he is settled over his throne. So yes. then, where is Allah Himself? Subhanahu Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is above His throne. The Rasul Sallallahu mm. one day was walking the streets of Medina and he saw a little girl who was a servant, a slave of a man, and he asked her, "Where is Allah?" Yeah. She yeah. said, "Fi Sama, above, above, above." Mm. above. Yeah. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi turned to her master and he said, "Atiqha fa inna mu'mina." <laughs> Let her go free. She is a believer. <laughs> so she identified that he is above. Yeah. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam confirmed. Yeah. In the Quran Al-Kareem, his throne is above all. And he is settled above his throne. <laughs> so we know where, but we don't get into the how. Let <laughs> I me mean, emphasize this. We do not get into the how. Some groups have only confirmed seven names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Seven names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And they say these seven are necessities for us to understand because we have to, because of the existence. So he exists, he is all-knowing, he is all-wise, he speaks, he hears, he sees. And they mention these seven, yeah. mm-hmm. but then they cross out all the rest. Mm-hmm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 99. In Quran also. Yes, not yeah. seven. Yeah. Yeah. You see, when you start using logic, how far you can fall and you can deny. Before... We came back. I had said that I'm going to ask you a question. (laughs) And I hope that you have thought about it. I want you to share with the viewers a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that made a difference in your life. That made you change. That made you think. That made you who you are today. So who wants to start among you? And share that with us. I guess I'll go first. Abdul Fattah, since your name is Abdul Fattah. Yeah, that's strange. Uh, because it has to deal with that. Al Fattah is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and it means the opener, if I'm correct, right? It can mean the opener, yeah. So, what impact it has on me is maybe before uh, there was, in my past, maybe I wasn't as 
good Muslim as I should have been until later Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had guided me to try to work step by step you know so in a way he's like opening al-fatah you know opening my heart to be guided in Islam you know so may, may that opening continue to increase bi Who wants to come a second? Who wants to share? Anyway, okay. a special. I, 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 I would the like best to, one, I guess. <laughs> may I ask you something? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah. I would like. To ask oh, so you're returning the question <laughs> to me? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, Akmal. Um, Akmal is uh, my name. Akmal. Then uh, Akmal is. Uh, I think it's an attribute of uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, isn't it? But. Um, if I put Alif Lam there, so it becomes Al Akmal. Can I use that name? Yes, it is. You can use that name because Al Akmal is not one of the names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay. Al Akmal is not really an attribute, okay. as stated. Lillahi al Kamal. Uh -huh. He has a perfection. Okay. Okay. Uh, but Akmal is not in that sense or in that phrase linguistically. Okay. So if you want to use the Alif and Lam, you can do so. But that did not relieve you from the question that I have asked. Oh my God! Well, Ibrahim comes first before okay. we get back to you. Uh, my my name is Ibrahim. Yes. But uh, the the war Ibrahim, I heard uh, from my teachers that saying the war Ibrahim is not a, a proper Arabic language. It's uh, it it is uh, from Iraqi language uh, from uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim's country. Uh, they say, they told me that the war Ibrahim it means going far away from uh from from uh okay from the idol from the status you see and uh, not to pray for them to pray only for god and go away from shir okay. that's that's yeah. beautiful but let, yeah. let us share the names of allah subhanahu allah. wa ta'ala yeah. sure. and how those names yeah. changed you i know each one of us have a beautiful name <laughs> okay but let's get to the best of names okay Maybe Al Ali. Al Ali. Al Ali. Because what does it mean? Al Ali means the knowledge. The all knower. Yeah, all knower. Yeah. So because Allah is all knower, so and and His name is Ali. That means that we have to to get more knowledge. Then you know. Yeah, so does that, does that have that made you seek more knowledge in your yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, of course. And have yeah. you used your time actually yeah. to read a lot? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Well, may you continue because knowledge yeah. is enlightenment to life. Okay. Let's go to Noor and we'll get right okay. back to you while you're thinking. Okay. Uh, one of Allah's name is uh, uh, Rahim. It's mean merciful. Ar Rahim, the merciful. merciful. Yes. Yes. This is very beautiful names. Uh, it should make ourselves uh, become merciful also to another people. Uh, so we have to help other people while they need our help and like that, I think. Especially during our time, brothers and sisters, with the wars <laughs> and the calamities and the yeah. tragedies and earthquakes yes. and tsunamis and, 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 and forests being yeah. burnt. There's a lot of mercy <laughs> that we need to share among humanity, yeah. Yeah. regardless of where they come from. No that was a very good one. Okay, we have the name uh, as, as salam as salam that means peace. Okay, we, if we are in some area without peace, we can live nicely, then we will not feel all right. With peace, we can live nicely and feel all right uh, without war, without any, any violence. Then uh, the peace is there and we will feel all right. And, and we're in desperate need of okay. peace. There's yeah. countries yeah. that have civil <laughs> wars. Yeah. Uh, tribal wars, gangs and cities. There's a lot of violence in life. Indeed. Islam, from the, the, the one that brought it down, he named himself as Salam, yeah. Yeah. the peace. Yeah, okay. And I hope you found peace within your heart yeah. and peace within your surroundings. Because that's Amen. the idea of this. I'd like to complete also this episode with a story of my own that always brings me back to the reality of who I am. Okay. I'm named Abdul Hakim, and I've always seemed to see it too long, especially growing in the States. It has 10 letters. So yeah. I had a hard time signing my name. No doubt. <laughs> and then one day while I was in Saudi Arabia during my studies, I entered a store in Riyadh. And in that store, there was a sign 
which it said, How can I fear poverty when I am the servant of the giver? Mm. When I am the servant of the provider? كَيْفَ أَخَافُ الْفَقْرِ وَأَنَا عَبْدُ الرَّزَّاقِ And I sat there and I said, Hmm. And how can I fear ignorance when I am the servant of the wise? Mm -hmm. And from then on, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. I started to become a little more patient, gathered my composure. I started to be serious in life because I am the servant of the wise. You have a name. Out of those 99, I'm sure that have touched you. Or pick up the Quran and look at those names and allow it to touch you. And let those names change who you are and your mission in life. That is why we learned them. And that is how they can save us from hellfire. I wish we had more time to continue talking about this topic for the next 10 or 15 episodes. But the idea is to touch a little, to open your heart and mind to it. We have came to an end for our today's show within our series of Eternal Message. Looking forward to seeing you and you in our upcoming episode, which we will try to pick up name, pick out names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talk about them and understanding them. For the next few episodes, we will talk about the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I, fe I feel can help us in our life. As Allah, I ask Allah that He will gather us mm -hmm. as believers mm -hmm. and bring our hearts together. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.